So I'm going to be talking about the Babarakalis, and I'm going to be starting off with the spoken word poems. They told us to be quiet while they killed us because we were bold enough to resist colonial control. With faces of oppression and bodies of tyranny and hands almost as big as their ego, they attempted to eliminate us all. But their attempts only gave us more hope and strength to implant the seeds of Sikhi, the seeds of revolution which would later grow on into imperishable trees. And how do they expect us to be quiet when a guru told us himself, when all other means of readdressing a wrong have failed, it is righteous and just to draw the sword. I will uproot tyranny from the root. I will teach sparrows how to fight hawks and one man to fight a million so that the righteous can live in peace. Ex-World One Sikh veterans and other great youngs follow this message of Guruji. They created a group called the Babbarakalis, and every time the government heard this name, fear struck through their bodies. The Babbar smiled at death. They made sure Sikhi did not die while fighting for independence, while fighting for anyone and everyone else. And here's how, when presented with the conflict of colonization from the British, the Sikhs made the Babbar Akali Lahir as a compromise. India in the 1800s was filled with magnificent palaces, fine jewelry, extraordinary art, spices, cotton, and an amazing manufacturing system. India was a vastly rich country, which is why it was called Sonidhi Chidi, meaning golden bird. Britain has, had been trading with India since the 1600s through the East Indian Company, and they have never wanted territory in India until now. But how did the British control India from 1757 to 1947? With great weaponry, a strong profit motive, and Eurocentric confidence. By 1700, heavy company taxation and other policies had left millions of Indians impoverished. The British soldiers and traders became richer and richer while the Indians starved. The British started to establish their troops over areas in India. Nonetheless, they started to colonize India. Only about two-thirds of India was considered ruled by the British. However, the British exerted pressure on the princes that ruled the remaining parts of India, effectively controlling all of India. During World War I, the British had declared war on Germany on India's behalf without even consulting Indian leaders. More than one million Indians were forced to go and fight, a lot of them whom were six. After coming back from World War I, all the six earned for their valor and bravery was to be sent home. At this time, the economic life of the people in Punjab was vastly deteriorating. The government had broken the back of the farmers in Punjab since almost all of their land was in the hands of money lenders. When the veteran Sikhs saw this, they went to go protest. This event was known as the Janiyawala Bagh, or Amritsar Massacre, which took place in April 13, 1919 where hundreds were killed. The weight of repression and being peaceful was just too much on the Sikhs now. The Sikhs could not bear this economic destitution anymore. They could not bear the disrespect of their religious places. The Sikhs' beliefs had been well entrenched within the Sikhs, and they knew that being peaceful was not going to get them anywhere. And what added more to their raging fire was a newspaper called Akali from Lahore starting in 1920. This newspaper is very crucial because it was an eye-opener to the people. A lot more people understood what was going on, and they were not happy. The government started placing Mahants to be in charge of Gurdwari. Mahants were non-Sikhs, usually Hindu. In 1920, a lot of Gurdwari, such as Siri Akal Tak Sahib and Harmandar Sahib, were taken from the Mahants and handed over to Panting committees, since the Sikhs did not want Mahants controlling Gurdwari. Gurdwari are not supposed to have committees, but this is just one of many examples of how the British Raj had affected Sikhi long term. <clears throat> Gurdwari, oh my, the British obviously loved the Mahants, so they started to support them and grant them favors. The Mahants were still controlling Taran Sahib, so in 1921, the peaceful Akalis went and tried to reason with the Mahants, and at the ninth time, the Mahants attacked the Akalis, resulting in many deaths. The same thing happened in Karna Sahib in the same year, 1921, where more than 100 Akalis received shahidi or martyrdom. However, the Sikhs could not be suppressed, so Nankana Sahib was also handed over to Sikh committees. After many peaceful protests and trying to be reasonable, the Sikhs realized that they should end this peaceful compromise because it was not getting them anywhere. Even peaceful processes have a limit. Therefore, they, start, therefore they started bear, bearing arms because from what Guruji says, it is now righteous and just to draw the sword. So, after all this conflict, the Babarakali Lahar, or movement, was established as a compromise, seeing that remaining non-violent 
was not ending the government's barbaric ways. Now weapons were the answers to the subjugation and repression the people faced. The Bubbers started spreading their views in a very active way. By preaching from town to town, these six preached for hours throughout numerous villages. They were followed by the police who had even issued arrest warrants on these six. However, the police were always frightened of the Bubbers. The government saw these preachings as a major threat and started having their own peaceful gatherings. And they told the people, our government has turned into, into a heaven. They have established post offices, hospitals, and schools. They have controlled all thefts and societies and established a reign of peace and prosperity. Carry gold in your arm and no one will look at you. A few unwise and foolish people are roaming about the villages who are propagating they will bring the rule of the Khalsa and bring their own form of prosperity. They preach pillaging the houses of the rich and killing the gentlemen. They loot the travelers and snatch the food from the women who carry it to the fields. Do not come in to talk to the Babbars and spoil the piece of land. Instead, report about them to the government and earn an honorable name for yourselves. This, of course, had no effect on the people, for the people knew this was false. Less and less people started to show at the peaceful gatherings, so the government attracted the people by using dance and music as free entertainment. The Jatha or the six use these peaceful gatherings for their own propaganda. Not only did the Babbars fight for Sikhi, but also anyone and everyone else. Their goal was to free Punjab, to free India and save Sikhi. They showed no selfishness because they didn't just want to fight for Sikhi, but others as well. They wanted justice and they wanted to uproot tyranny from the root. And they continue the, Sikhi, the legacy of Sikhi. You can see this when during one of the proceedings against the Babbars, one Babbar said this. Whatever we did, it was not meant to save our lives. We had reformed the enemies of the Panth and those who had deceived and harmed it. Our brothers and sisters were fighting a peaceful battle. We have fought battles as were fought by Sri Guru Har Gobind Sahib and Guru Gobind Singh Ji. We have done nothing against the tenets of Sikhi, when our gurus did not care for their lives, who were true emperors and masters of the two worlds, what concern could death have for us? It's true because when they were about to be killed, the Babbar smiled and kissed the noose of death. This was just one of the many reasons the government was afraid of the Babbars. Another was how one Babbar could fight 30 or 50 or even more soldiers before dying. And it's just like how Guru Gobind Singh Ji said, Sava lakh se ek ladao, tabai Gobind Singh naam kahao, meaning 150,000 will fight one, then call me Gobind Singh. When people started asking how it was possible for just a handful of Sikhs to fight and face large armies is when the Babbars had truly implanted the seeds of Sikhi, the seeds of revolution which would later grow on into trees. Now the government was fully warned and it was much contributed from the action of the Kalis. So what the government did was pay reward to whoever reported the Babbars. Wall bills were being placed in every village and rewards varied with some up to 2,000 rupees. Also, anyone who was sheltering any Babbar was harassed, beaten, and possibly killed. Babbars were being deceived by their own friends and could not trust anyone. The Babbars also reformed their enemies, meaning they changed people for the good. On March 3, 1923, the Babbars attacked the Jamshir railway station where the Babbars and even common men were being tortured because the station master abused his power. When they attacked, they made the station staff apologize and get assurance that they will not do this in the future. They had done this many times to many people, traitors, police officers, and such. Making many smaller forms in Punjab was essentially made huge differences. Even with the wall bills and arrest warrants, it was extremely arduous for the police to contain the Babbars. It was not until the Shromani Committee, who were also six, themselves said they do not support the Babbars and what they're doing is against Sikhi, which aided the government to successfully suppress the movement. Babbars were only being arrested and killed because their own betrayed them, like the Shromani Committee and many other Sikh traitors. We can all see that all throughout history, Sikh groups or movements never ended until a Sikh betrayed them. By 1926, the Babbara Kali Lahad had come to an end. They accomplished a vast amount throughout these few but very crucial years. Of the few handful Babbar shake the determination of the British in their objective of conquering the world. They also made many reforms in Punjab and brought justice to many. They revived the glory of Sikhi and let out a ya loud yell to the world that Sikhi is still alive and thriving. Unfortunately, the movement ended. However, it was only due to the failure of the Panthic leaders to unite with one another. The government had done a very well job on exploiting out their differences. Instead of making clear plans with one another, the Panthic leaders instead started criticizing each other, which unfortunately still hasn't ended today. 
If the synth, if the sick band had ekta, which is unity, if we looked at our similarities rather than a few differences, then just imagine how the band could be. Bye, Guruji Khalsa. Bye, Guruji.